The joint that everybody thinks of as the shoulder joint is the glenohumeral joint, but in fact there are other articulations which we need to examine. Let's mark them on the surface anatomy here. First of all, let's mark out the acromion, which is prolongation of the scapula along the spine of the scapula. Then let's mark out the, the clavicle, which curves round here and articulates with the acromion here. And this joint, the acromioclavicular joint, can be a source of pain. The next thing to remember is that the rotator cuff, particularly the supraspinatus muscle, which has its uh, fleshy fibres above the spine of the scapula here, passes underneath the acromion and inserts onto the greater tuberosity of the humerus and is the, is the initiator of abduction. But it isn't the only abductor of the shoulder because overlying all this arrangement is the sort of cowl shape of the deltoid. Now, the sort of pains that you can get from uh, around the shoulder fall into three uh, big groups. Probably the commonest pain is a pain arising from the area underneath the acromion where the rotator cuff passes underneath the acromion and onto the head of the humor onto the top of the humerus. That pain typically tends to be a diffuse pain and the patient will often indicate with their whole hand uh, covering the deltoid area that that's where the pain is felt. And that's subacromial pain. Pain that arises from the acromioclavicular joint is typically much more localised, and if you ask the patient where did it hurt when that's the problem, they'll typically point with one finger to the acromioclavicular joint. So that's the subacromial pain and the acromioclavicular pain. And the third pain is pain arising from the glenohumeral joint itself, where the leading symptom is likely to be stiffness, and the sort of condition one has in mind there is a uh, frozen shoulder. Let's concentrate for a little while on subacromial pain, subacromial impingement of the rotator cuff as the arm is abducted. Let's stand you up now and face the camera and just lift your arm out to the side like that. Fine. That is abduction. But notice that there are two elements to the abduction. There is true glenohumeral abduction where the where the uh, movement is between the humerus and the scapula, and there is also rotation of the scapula on the wall of the chest. Both are involved in natural elevation of the arm to the side, but only the glenohumeral movement, strictly speaking, is abduction in the anatomical sense. Certainly when you're examining the glenohumeral joint, you want to control the scapulothoracic rotation if you're going to understand what's happening to the glenohumeral joint. The way to do that is to put your hand on top of the acromion like that and prevent it from elevating. Then ask the patient to lift the arm out to the side and observe the movement that is truly occurring between the humerus and the scapula. A patient with a completely stiff shoulder may still be able to mount a certain respectable elevation, but they will do it all by scapulothoracic rotation. And you have to watch out for that.